Hi, welcome to another episode of Z Notes Live. I'm your host Aishwarya, and today, with con in conversation with us, we have Afreen, and we will be discussing biological molecules. Uh, over to you, Afreen. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Afreen. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the chapter four of IGCSE Biology, um, biological molecules. So let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, this is our syllabus. Uh, so basically, it states that you need to be able to know the chemical composition of uh, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And then you need to know that so the larger molecules, like carbohydrates, are made up of smaller, mo smaller monomers. And then you need to be able to test for these uh, particular molecules. Uh, and then if you go into the supplementary star side, that's the extended, version, uh, extended part of the syllabus, you have to know about the structure of DNA. And that's basically it. So short chapter. So to begin with, <clears throat> we have the components of molecules, biological molecules. So if first we have carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates are made up of C, uh, that is carbon, and H, hydrogen, and O, um, oxygen, CHO, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. If you look at fats and oils, it has the same, composition, uh, same uh, co uh, compositional elements as carbohydrates, carbon, hi carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. However, the ratios in which these elements are present in, are different. Um, you don't need to know about the details about that. For RGCC biology, you just need to know the names of these elements. And then we go on to proteins. Proteins have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. These are the three um, elements that are common in all three. Additionally, proteins have nitrogen, and sometimes it also contains sulfur. And that's it for this part. So this is something you need to memorize and it can come in, in the MCQ paper or it could come in um, paper four as well. But uh, yeah, and in paper four, they usually ask you, um, okay, so these are the uh, components. So what could it possibly be? Or something like that. And usually the question for this one's easier. So you could expect this in MCQ almost always. And then we have uh, monomers and complex molecules. So you need to understand that polymers are made from smaller parts called monomers. And basically carbohydrates, proteins, and um, fats, you have to think of them as polymers and the smaller parts as monomers. So um, the left side of the table shows the basic units and the right side, show, right side shows the larger molecules. So let's look at the right side first. The first, uh, column row the first line says starch cellulose glycogen see so these are all examples of carbohydrates and the basic unit is called simple sugars um, but in biological terms you need to know about the word glucose um, you learn more about glucose in chapter 7 that's the human diet but for now you have to know that glucose makes up these larger more complex called molecules called starch cellulose or glycogen or um, the umbrella term would be carbohydrates. Uh, next line is fats and oils. Fats and oils are made up of smaller parts called fatty acids and glycerol. Uh, and yeah, there's no biological specific scientific word that you know that you need to know for fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol is a specialized word. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. And then the next line says proteins. Proteins are large chains. The smaller parts are called amino acids. So why do you need to know this? Um, we're gonna be talking, we're gonna be learning more about uh, the, the larger molecules and how it's broken down in the further chapter, in the coming chapters. So this is the base that we're building for, the, for chapter five and chapter seven, mostly. Okay, so um, now you're going to be testing for these molecules. So you need to be you need to know the test for five different uh, biological molecules. That's starch, reducing sugars, proteins, fats, and vitamin C. And now this is something you need to memorize, and you need to memorize the positive and the negative results. It's going to be helpful if you try these in the in a laboratory uh, to help you gain practical understanding. But uh, just looking at videos and um, memorizing this really helps. Uh, I've memorized it. And my teachers also uh, recommend students to memorize this. So to begin with their starch. Uh, so first, oh, all of these start with taking the sample of the food, crushing it, putting it, adding a little bit of water, 
and then adding it to a test tube. So that's how you get that's how you get this substance, the sample for testing. So when you after you do that, now you add the reagents that you're going to use for testing. So for starch, you have to add iodine, a few drops of iodine, and a positive result will indicate is indicated by a blue black color. So if if in the food sta food sample starch is present, so for example you took bread, you crushed it, you added some water, you made it into a paste, you added it to the test tube, and then you added a few drops of iodine. The food sample should turn blue black because starch is present. However, if it was another sample, food sample, and starch wasn't present, the color would have been um, brown. That's the color of iodine. Okay. Next up, we have reducing sugar. Same thing, you take your food sample, you crush it, you add some water, make it into a paste, you add it to the test tube, and then you add your reagent. In this case, it's the Benedict's reagent. Remember this, reducing sugars, Benedict's reagent. And you have to gently warm the mixture. So a water bath would be ideal uh, for around two to three minutes. A positive result is shown by a brick red pre precipitate. So there's going to be a layer of brick red color, okay? And a negative result show, means that the color uh, has remained blue. There's no change. The Benedict's reagent is a blue reagent. Uh, it's a blue color chemical. So if it's negative, there's going to be no color change. Next up, we have proteins. Same thing. You crush the sample, add some water, make it into a paste, add it to the test tube, and then you add a few drops of biorate reagent. So protein, biorate. Protein, biorate. That's something... Okay, um, so to the sample, you add a few drops of biorates reagent and a positive result is indicated by a mauve color. That's a purple color. Um, Cambridge accepts anything from um, lilac to purple. Uh, mauve is a little specialist. So if you're artistic, go for it. But I would recommend purple. Next up, fats. Uh, fats is the emulsion test. You've got, you've got the emulsion test for fats. So same thing, you prepare your sample, you add it to a test tube, and then you add ethanol to the mixture. Um, and then you uh, add equal amounts of ethanol and distilled water. And the, a positive result is shown by a milky white emulsion. Just like this cloudy color emulsion that you'll see forming. Uh, next is vitamin C. So for vitamin C, you'll do the same thing, the same paste thingy, and then add it to the test tube. And then you're going to add DCPIP. This is basically a chemical used to test for vitamin C. And DCPIP is dark blue in color. Now, when uh, you keep adding it till the till it goes till the chemical goes colorless. So if you keep adding it, it's going to remain blue. But at one point, it's going to become colorless. So the more drops you need to add, the more concentrated the vitamin C is. The less drops you use, the less concentrated it is. And if it's, um, if it's, oh no, I think, sorry, 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 I got it the wrong way around. The more drops you need to add, the more concentrated it is. And the less drops you need to, you add, the more concentrated it is. So basically this is um, the, the correlation between the concentration of vitamin C and the number of drops of DCPIP. This is a common question in uh, paper six, that's the alternative to practical. And um, they'll give you a whole list of steps. And this is uh, the what I just mentioned. It's not something you need to memorize per se, because um, if you look at the past papers, they'll um, usually tell you that, okay, if you add these many drops, it means it's more concentrated or it's less concentrated. So, and then they'll give you the sample A, B, C, and the number of drops added. And then you have to state uh, which one's more concentrated. So these are usually easy questions, something you can easily score in because they already gave you the data prior to the specific question. So all of these uh, food tests, they are a definite question in paper six. It's almost always there. Um, and if you can memorize this, it's an easy way to score sco score marks. So remember this, starch, iodine, positive result, blue-black color. Reducing sugar, Benedict's reagent, positive result, brick-red precipitate. Proteins, biorates reagent, positive result, purple color. Fats, emulsion test, ethanol and water, um, positive result is a cloudy emulsion. Vitamin C, you use DCPIP, positive result from blue to colorless. 
Um, and yeah, that's for a food test. Now we're looking at DNA. This is the extended part of the syllabus. Uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. This is not something you need to know, but I would suggest um, you do um, look at it. You know something about it. And DNA is basically two strands uh, coiled together to form a double helix, as you can see in the diagram here. Okay, and each each uh, strand contains bases called uh, sorry each strand contains chemicals called bases, and these are nitrogenous bases. So if you can see in the side here, um, nitrogenous bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Um, you don't need to know the full form of these. You just need to know A T and G C. Okay, and then the bonds these bases basically bond with the bases on the other strand so each strand contains a base right and these bases they bond with the base on the other strand and basically form a bond that's that keeps the that holds the struct the whole entire structure together so you need to know how these bases bond so a always bonds with t and c always bonds with g it never goes any other way it's always AT, AT together, and then CG together, nothing else. Or it could be TA or GC. The order doesn't matter, but it's always T and A together and G and C together. And uh, yeah, that's it for the topic content. Now we'll look at some questions. Okay, this is February, March, 2018, paper two. Uh, when a food substance is tested with iodine solution, which color shows the presence of starch? Um, if you'll remember, starch is, uh, for starch, you use iodine solution, and a positive result is shown by a blue-black blue color. So it's a straightforward question. The answer is A, blue-black. Next question is October-November 2021. Uh, the bases on one of the strands of a DNA molecule have the sequence shown. A, A, T, C, T, G. Okay. What is the corresponding sequence of bases on the other strand? Um, for these type of questions, I would recommend uh, writing the bonding for each letter. So they gave you the once one strand, the basis on one strand, right? So on top of it or below it, you can write the bonding for each letter. So you should know by now, A always bonds with T. So it's going to be T and then again A, so T. And the third letter is T, so it's going to be A. And then C, so G, T, so A, G, so C, right? So you have to think like that. And when you have the second, um, the other base sequence, you can basically match it with whichever matches in the options. So A, B, C, D. So this is this one should be T, T, A, T, T, A, G, A, C. And that is option D. Okay. And then there's May, June 2016. Um, paper two again. Some molecule, small molecules are used as the basic units in the synthesis of large food molecules. Which statement is correct? Amino acids are basic units of carbohydrates. That's false. Amino acids are basic units of proteins. Option B, fatty acids are basic units of glycogen. Um, no, fatty acids are basic units of fats and oils. Glycerol is a basic unit of oils. That is true. So the, option, the correct answer should be C. And yes, it is C. Okay, May June 2018, paper two. Uh, the table shows the results of food tests carried out on a fruit. So the test and the result, uh, it's shown. You've got the Benedict's test and the result is positive. So Benedict's test is the test for reducing sugar. So reducing sugar is present. Biuret, Biuret's test is positive. Biuret is for proteins and positive means that protein is present. Ethanol is for um, fatty fats and oils, and it's negative, so fats and oils are not present. And iodine is for starch, it's also negative, so starch is not present. So fat and starch is not present. Reducing sugar and proteins are present. So that should be option C, protein and reducing sugar. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. That's chapter four, IGC biology. Thank you so much, Afreen, for your time today. And it was a very knowledgeable lesson. I personally learned a lot, even though I didn't take bio. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.